Hi folks, I'm Rupert Hine from Action Coach Ned Kinross and I'm joined today by David Massey of The Apprentice Soul. Welcome David. Good morning Rupert and uh, nice to talk to you. Fantastic, well, well, well welcome along and just let's let's just start, T tell me about The Apprentice Soul. What is it and how did you get into it? Mm, well, that's, a, that's a long story but I'll try and keep it short. So The Apprentice Store is a, a managed uh, IT service provider. Uh, we focus on small businesses. So to us, a large organization is somebody who's got um, 50 users. The core of our clients um, operate uh, with below 25 uh, IT users. While the business might be larger, they have 25 IT users. And we offer them um, managed services. So that's remote support. Um, we do web development and only work at WordPress, but we provide managed services around that. And we help organizations to be able to become efficient in the way that they operate and we uh, do that using Microsoft Technologies, Microsoft Partner. And we also help clients to uh, achieve and maintain a security posture uh, using the Cyber Essentials framework. Fantastic. And and Apprentice stores us a social enterprise. We are, um, but we're strange for social enterprise because we charge for all of our services. Um, we are not grant dependent, we're revenue generating. Um, and I created the organization seven years ago uh, to be able to help the IT industry to, to get access to a workforce because there's a there's a huge skill shortage um, globally, uh, which has created some challenges. Um, but more importantly, what I, wanted, what I wanted to do was add resource that would not typically get uh, into the sector because you know, of poor academic backgrounds, um, you know, neurodiversity is a common thing that we come across, but lots of social barriers that can become a, a challenge. And living in, um, in in the Highlands of Scotland, that you know, what I wanted to do was to be able to help young people to uh, to get employed in the sector without having to relocate to large cities where they would typically get access to it, to employment. Fantastic. So how do you how do you go about finding the people who you're going to develop? Yeah, um, pre pandemic. Uh, that was really involved with um, the employability program. So when we look at those furthest from employment, that there there are safety nets for them. So that can be from Skills Development Scotland, the council, um, you know, employability programs run by um, Project Scotland. The the councils run them. Um, Bernardo's work. So there's lots of organisations that provide support for those young people, um, and part of that. Uh, support that they get is a period of work experience usually towards the end and you know we were found because we're quite a young young, young organization um because of our workforce that we were really good for them um and we're we're hard on them you know we're not we're not soft um uh, and the you know so we were when wherever we commercially needed somebody to join the team because of growth in the business we happened to have somebody uh, on work experience at that point in time that had all the skills and characteristics that we look for um, and offered them a job. So so what are the key characteristics? Because it's interesting, because you split it into skills and characteristics. So what are the key characteristics you look for in someone who's working for you? Um, work ethic is the, the prime one, um, because people think sitting in front of a computer is easy. Um, but if you think about the core of what we do is our customers come to us with a problem and we've got to work out what that problem is and fix it as quickly as possible and remember how we fixed it because I might see it again. Uh, so it's it's certainly work ethic is one of those um, things that we look for. They have to be good communicators and that means that they can listen and talk uh, and we need them to be able to write um, you know, properly. And, you know, one of the things we find with young people is, is they can't talk, they can't listen, and they can't write very well. Um, you know, so therefore they have to be prepared to learn, um, yeah. which really does involve listening and remembering things. And that, that's really what it is. Um, and as long as they've got that work ethic and the aptitudes there around some of the key skills that we look for, um, you know, so they do have some basic problem solving, um, you know, that's, that's okay. But it, it's far more about the character. You can teach the skills, to the person with the right attitude and um, it's hard to teach the attitude I, I, absolutely and you know it, it's one of those things that um you know when i'm working with people every time go 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 for the attitude for exactly that reason uh if you've got somebody who gets what your business is about then 
you, you can train train the skills. If they don't yeah. get what the business is about, even if they've got all the skills, they're, they're, they're just a terrorist in the organisation. And if you get the wrong attitude, it, it that has a huge impact on the culture. Um, and, and it's, you know, I mean, we, you know, our strap line is we care about your IT. Um, and the feedback from our clients is is that we do. Um, we, we go above and beyond. We, you know, we demonstrate that the team understands um, or, or makes a good attempt to try and understand the business um, that they're providing the support with. And, you know, the, the team care about the organization that's created them that opportunity. Um, and, and they don't want to, you know, to mess that up. Absolutely. And that's that's a really powerful place to be. So how how is it that you, what is it you do that brings the team in so that they care? How do you inspire them to care? The one thing we do is we correct things very early um, and we do not have a blame culture, you know, because we succeed and fail as a team. Uh, and and it doesn't matter what the problem is, share it, you know, because whilst you might be the person who's created it and can solve it, other people might be impacted by it. Um, and, you know, an example, you know, could be that you, you've done something, something's had an inadvertent reboot. And the impact of that is, is that um, there might be multiple people. So if someone inadvertently clicks the button at the wrong time, um, doesn't pay attention to what the message is that uh, you reboot a server and you've got a whole business that's going to be disrupted because the server's going to be going down. Um, you know, so you have to make everybody aware of that. So it's, it's you know, but equally there's the positives. If you, you find something, there's a piece of information, share it um, because it might be of use to somebody else. Yeah, absolutely. So over those seven years, you've, you've been, how many people have you developed through in that time? Um, we have added 23 people to the IT sector, um, and you know, but we've employed 25 people. Uh, you know, we've we've completed um, 27 uh, apprenticeships of, with our staff. We've created employment indirectly for five other people uh, by changing the attitude of, of other organisations about the, who they will recruit. Um, we've helped an, um, a number of children uh, who are in school doing foundation apprenticeships uh, that we've completed nine of those um working with within four regions of Scotland um so yeah we've 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 done we've done not bad um and today we employ seven people uh you know people do leave but they leave because they're moving on to um you know to start their career or continue their career somewhere somewhere else yeah. um but we've given them the opportunity to get into the sector yeah that's fantastic um, what you know, and this is all with people who, if if you were to believe that the, the common perception, most people struggle to uh, to employ <laughs> because they don't believe that that they that that they'll they'll care. Um, well, I, I think young people do care. But they, yeah. they they care about different things from us. That's for sure. That's you know, there's, there's generational changes. But I'm sure when we enter the workforce at 16 to 19, um, people of our age felt that we, you know, we we be useless. Um, you know, so so I think it's and it's hard for us to imagine what that's like. Um, but I think that a lot of the people who have been offered jobs, you know, had struggled to be able to even get work experience. I mean, you know, there was there was certainly one of one of the people in the early days that they couldn't get work experience through their employability program because of their really poor academic performance at school. So if you have a look at somebody on paper and they haven't completed their national fives, you know, most people would say, well, if you couldn't be bothered to stay at school to do that, you know, you could leave school at 16 and not have your national fives um, or you couldn't be bothered to take an exam to do the national fives. Why would I employ you? But that person was immensely humbled about the fact that they got a job um, and, and they are doing really well in the IT sector. They don't work for us anymore, but they're doing really well because of that opportunity was given to them. It, it, it's a really useful lesson that school performance is only really a measure of how you performed in that environment, not how you can perform in different environments and we all learn in different ways. So 
I've got a good, good friend who works in the engineering sector who was broadly pretty bad at maths all, all the way through school because he couldn't see the point of it. And it, it just didn't work for him. And he's now in a career running a business, which is all about maths. It's all about maths to a very high degree, designing stuff. But it works with the practical application for him and his brain in that way. Yeah. Um, and being able to take people on, the, on, on their merits and not on just how they performed in a specific environment is really powerful. What, what, what's your biggest learnings that you would want to pass on to other employers from your time doing that with, with young people coming into employment? People of any age are immensely frustrating. I think we are more prepared to give somebody who is approaching things with a, um, a more mature attitude that is aligned to our thought processes. We will give them a little bit more time. But I think what you have to do is you've got to move a lot closer to that young person because young people are less forgiving. Um, they have got no loyalty you know and you've got to earn that loyalty um, and as soon as that loyalty is broken they'll be off um and that requires an effort and if you put that effort in you will be surprised as to what you can get from that young person to improve you what what's the most powerful book you've you've read i don't read books i, <laughs> I read books i read for information not for pleasure okay <laughs> So, so what's the most powerful piece of learning that you've done on your business journey? Um, I, I think it, it is the fact of don't, don't go at things with a preconceived idea. I think it's give it a go um, and you might surprise yourself as to what comes, you know, comes out of that. Um, you know, and I've always hated the, well, we tried that before. And it, and it didn't work. And my view has always been, well, it didn't work then. You know, but the people have changed, the time has changed, the business has changed. So give it, why not give it an, an, another go? Um, yeah, so, so I think it is just give it a try. Uh, you might succeed in, in achieving what you set out, but you've learned something by trying. Really powerful. So give, 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 Select people based on their values, on their, their general characteristics, rather than, rather than the CV and the skills. Take every situation on its own merits. Um, give people the loyalty and the, uh, the choice so that they can perform. Where are you looking to be in five years' time? You've come a, come a long way in seven. What's the next five years hold? Um, we've done some big, big expansions. I mean, pre-pandemic, we, we were at five. Post-pandemic, we were at 12 and we shrunk back to back to seven. Um, we're better for that because we've learned some things um, that we can do and we've learned some things that we can't do. Um, the things that we can do, we keep on doing. There's some things that we can't do. We'll say, well, we'll not do them again. Um, so I think we've done a degree of consolidation around that. Um, we've spent very little money on marketing. Um, over those seven years, because the core of the work that we get actually comes by referrals, which is the reason why we have our supporters awards, um, where we um, give glass diamonds. So this is the smallest diamond that's available. The biggest one is 12 centimeters big. Wow. Um, and that's to say thank you for, um, you know, for people who have given us work. Um, and, you know, you can't buy them, you have to earn them. And we choose who earns them based upon the trade that we get. Um, and they go to customers, suppliers, and people who just refer. Um, and we've always been in a position where we've given out a platinum, at least one platinum, to people who have um, supported one whole salary of an apprentice. Yeah. So what we want to do is keep on fulfilling our social purpose, because as a social enterprise that trades, we have two customers. Those customers that um, pay for our services and get the care that we feel that they deserve. Um, and they get the opportunity to be able to develop our team. Um, and for our team, we give them the opportunity for sustainable employment. And we just want to do more of that. And we want to be able to care for more organizations. Um, now, what that might look like, 
I've got no idea um, because I've got no idea what the opportunity is at the minute. We've got quite a, a high level of referred inquiries, but we are going to start doing some marketing to be able to let people know about us who don't know about us. Um, and we don't know. And we are a little bit concerned about what that might produce. Yes. <laughs> you know, when we've been turning down work for seven years because we've got more work than we can cope with um, to be in a position to open up direct marketing and you've got no idea what you're going to get. Yeah. How big could it go? Well, that's the crazy one, isn't it? How big could it go? Um, I mean, we are having some conversations um, and they've been with an organisation in Australia and America um, about a global opportunity for a global organisation. Um, but, you know, um, we're also talking to a part of that global organisation who's interested in um, taking our business model into other countries. Fantastic. So, yeah, it, it's an interesting thing, um, you know, to, you know, to run a social enterprise that is very commercially focused. Absolutely. Well, you've, you've made... You've made a massive difference to 25 plus people's lives in terms of getting them into employment so far. The number of people you'll impact as you continue to grow has the potential to be huge. Um, and it's it's been fascinating hearing about the journey you've been on and that that focus on caring about developing the people within the commercial context rather than just as a as a charitable enterprise mm. so david thank you very much that's been absolutely superb and loads of lessons for for everyone else to learn along the way thank you Rupert.